Syekh datang dengan takbir. 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 Allah bersalam. Indonesia always wear this. They come to Saudi and they say, "How are you, Syekh?" As if I know. A man came to the Prophet والسلام, and said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, I have a request. He said, ask whatever you want. He said, I pray to Allah to make me with you in Jannah. So the Prophet said, continue to make dhikr. Make your tongue moist with Allah's dhikr continuously. You ask yourself sincerely. How many times today have you sought Allah's forgiveness by saying Rabbi Ghfirli? In Sahih al-Imam Muslim Where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam says Allah Azza wa Jal Does not look At your Forms And wealth Allah doesn't look At your bodies And your wealth Rather, he looks at your hearts and deeds. This means that <clears throat> what we should be focusing on is our hearts and our actions and deeds. Now, if we look at the vast majority of us youngsters, you, not me, of course. <laughs> we focus on how handsome we look, how good bodies we have, how big our biceps, how much bench press we can do, what is our stamina, how many kilometers can you jog per day. If you can do CrossFit, mm, mashallah, good. If you can do Silat, if you can do MMA, oh, very good. <laughs> this is good. But it is not what Allah wants from you. No one works hard on their heart's training. What do we mean by heart training? You have to train your heart. How? By filling it up with what pleases Allah. Because this is what Allah is looking at. Your heart. So tell me, what do you have in your heart? Blood. <laughs> this is the physical heart. The actual heart, what do you have? Oh, nothing, sir. Like everyone else. Unfortunately, this is not true. The vast majority of us have hearts that are corrupted. Our hearts are filled with Envy, an evil eye. Why does he have money? Why does he have a good car? Oh, mashallah, his bike is very uh, modern. He has a Kawasaki Ninja. <laughs> he has a Suzuki Samurai. He has this, this. Subhanallah. We keep on looking at people and wanting to have what they have. And we're never satisfied. Mashallah, you have iPhone 13. Yeah, but it's not good. Why? He has 14. <laughs> so you're always not satisfied. Also, in our hearts, we have grudges. Why? My cousin, three years ago, did not invite me to lunch. He invited my other cousins, but he did not invite me. Okay. So I will not talk to him. I will not speak to him. I will not invite him. I will not visit him. For three years, 
because he forgot to invite you for dinner. You do this? What is in your heart? Corruption. In our heart, we have a lot of deceit, cheating. <laughs> I fooled him. <laughs> I made business with him. I took his money. And now he cannot take his money back. I feel happy because I cheat people. I take their money and they can take me to court. How do I sleep at night? Like a baby. Why? Because if you had a healthy heart, Wallahi, you cannot sleep. I cannot sleep if I borrow five rupiah from someone and that do not pay it back to him. But I know thousands of people who borrowed millions and don't feel a problem. They go to bed and sleep like a baby. Is your heart filled with such illnesses? You have a problem. There are more. Some of us, his heart is filled with shirk. And this is the ultimate problem because you're dead. If your heart is filled with shirk, what is shirk? Thinking that other than Allah can benefit you or harm you. Thinking that other than Allah knows the future. Thinking that other than Allah Azza wa Jal can give you rizq and provision. Where is Tawheed? A lot of the Muslims today don't have Tawheed. They go to graveyards and worship the saints, the awliya. They say, Ya, Shi, ya, 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 ya Tijani, Ya Jilani, Ya Shadili, Ya Badawi. They call them for help. Who are they? They call Al Hussein, Ya Hussein, like the Shia. They call Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salatu salam. Ya Shafi'ana, Ya Habibana, do this for me, do this for me. This is shirk. Shirk, shirk? A prophet? Yes. You only call one. Who? Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah says in Surah Al Naml, أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُضْطَرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءَ وَيَجْعَلُكُمْ خُلَفَاءَ الْأَرْضِ أَإِلَاهُ الْمَعَ اللَّهِ Who is it that responds to the one in distress and reveals and unveils and removes hardship and makes you successors of one another? Is there any God but Allah? SubhanAllah. So, how many of us, his heart is filled with shirk? What are forms of shirk, Shaykh? In Urdu, they call it ta'viz, ta'wiza. What do you call it in? We call it, call it ta'wiza, we call it tamima. You wear something and you think that this is protection. <laughs> this is shirk. Huh? The Prophet says, Man fala Allah. Whoever wears something of an amulet, thinking that it would protect him, may Allah does not protect. May Allah not protect him. It's very dangerous. Many people wear rings with stone. <laughs> I know people from Indonesia always wear this. They come to Saudi and they say, "How are you, Sheikh?" <laughs> As if I know. I said, Mashallah, what is this? Is this Aqiq? <laughs> he said, Yes, I have 10 stones. One for physical strength, you know, <laughs> and one for rizq, and one for protection, and one for A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan. This is shirk, pure shirk. You think that a stone can bring you th things like this? So, if your heart is not healthy, you're doomed, you're in hell. So you have to fix yourself before it's too late. But Sheikh, I pray five times a day. It's not going to help you. Because your heart is not connected to Allah. It's connected somewhere else. How many of the Muslims go for soothsayers and fortune tellers? 
Sheikh, I have maybe jinn possession, I have evil eye, I have black magic, I have envy. Sheikh, I have problems, I have to go to Mawlana. And Mawlana sits there, mashallah, like me. <laughs> not, not long beard, they usually cut their beard because, but mine is too long, you know. So he comes and says, okay, okay, what's your name? You tell him your name. Okay. What's your mother's name? <laughs> Why do you want to know my mother's name? Are you proposing? <laughs> so he said, no, no, just tell me. And then he sa asks you about the date of birth. Are you passport immigration? <laughs> what is this? He is a fortune teller. He's connected with the jinn and he wants to establish with your jinn so that they can find something. This is utterly shirk. How many among the people here go to such people? Audhu Billah. So this is something that corrupts your heart. Now we go a little bit down. What is else corrupting my heart? Bid'ah. Innovation. When you think that you know more than Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. Why are you doing this innovation? Because the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam did not do it. He said, because it's good. Subhanallah. Do you know more than the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam? It can't be. Give me examples of innovation, Shaykh. Whenever we want to depart ways, this is very famous in Egypt, in Cairo. Whenever we are sitting like this in a gathering and we want to leave, to ensure that we will meet again, what do I say? I say, La ilaha illallah. What do you say? Muhammad Rasulullah. Khalas. What is this? This is a way to ensure that we will meet again. Is this bid'ah? Of course it's bid'ah. Sheikh, but it is good shahada. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Yes, but not when departing, when leaving. When you leave, you say, Assalamu alaikum. But when you say, La ilaha illallah, and you're waiting for him to say, Muhammad Rasulullah, this is bid'ah. What else are there to be bid'ah? Thinking that reciting the Fatiha is barakah. So we have a gathering now. Okay, Bismillah, let's recite the Fatiha. Everybody. <laughs> what are you doing? It's barakah, barakah. Did the Prophet ﷺ ever recite the Fatiha outside of Salah? If you recite the Fatiha before you go to bed, good? Why good? The Prophet didn't do it. Sheikh, this is Fatiha, it's good. Okay, is it good to recite Fatiha before you go to the toilet? Why? Why? My mind as well. So you see the difference? When Shaitan comes to your head, he makes things different. But when you follow the Sunnah, you are on the straight path. Whatever the Prophet did, we do. Whatever the Prophet did not do, we do not do. A man once was next to Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al-Khattab. May Allah be pleased with them. So the man sneezed and said, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. Ibn Umar said, I say, Allahumma salli wa sallam ala Muhammad, but this is not the way the Prophet told us. He said, whenever you sneeze, you say, that's it. Don't make a khutbah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulullah. Ya ibadallah, ittaqullah. It's one sneeze. If you have corona, what are you going to do? <laughs> so we have to cleanse our hearts from whatever makes it sick because Allah is looking. 
There is no shirk. There is no bid'ah. There is no malice. There is no hatred. There is no envy. It's only appreciating what people have and praying to Allah that they have more. And if Allah brings me some, Alhamdulillah. If not, I'm happy for you, my brother. I pray to Allah that he increases you in wealth and in health. Instead of sitting there and looking at people, said, why then? Why do they have this? Why do they have that? Allah says in the Quran, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهِ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ On the day of judgment, money and children will not benefit you. The only thing that will benefit you is a pure heart. A heart that Allah Azza wa Jal loves because he sees what, what he, he's pleased with what he sees. Now, is it enough to have a pure heart? Yes or no? It's an issue of dispute. Always, whenever you ask something in Islam, say, it's an issue of dispute. So that you will always be safe. <laughs> because if you say yes, then you might be wrong. Wrong. If you say no, you might be wrong. Wrong. So if you, it's your dispute, khalas, you're safe. <laughs> Again, is it enough to come with a pure heart? No. Why? The hadith. Allah does not look at your forms and at your wealth. Rather looks at your heart and deeds. So if your heart is pure, but you don't have good deeds, what will happen? You will lose. I have a pure heart. Don't I? Of course. I have a very pure heart. So if I see a beautiful woman, 40 years ago, not now. <laughs> and I say to myself, hmm, I will give her da'wah fi sabilillah. <laughs> I want to give her da'wah. So I invite her to dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and then we chit chat just to make her fall in love not in me in Islam <laughs> my heart is pure will Allah accept my deeds of course not no way Allah will accept me because my heart pure my deeds are impure and so many people, you say to them, Akhi, fear Allah, what you're doing is haram. He said, Allah knows what's in my heart. <laughs> this is not enough. You're coming out of a nightclub and you're drunk and you didn't pray for six months and you say Allah knows what's in your heart. You don't have a heart to begin with. So you have to have deeds to comply with the purity of your heart. Therefore, we have to work on our hearts by training, working out, not in the gym, <laughs> rather in the heart's gym, in the masjid, in circles of knowledge, in associating yourself with good brothers and sisters. Of course, the brothers with the brothers and sisters, the sisters, <laughs> none. Uh, they will misquote me, Sheikh said brothers and sisters, khalas, alhamdulillah. <laughs> You have to fill your heart with dhikr. A man came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, I have a request. He said, ask whatever you want. He said, I pray to Allah to make me with you in Jannah. So the Prophet said, continue to make dhikr. Make your tongue moist with Allah's dhikr continuously. You ask yourself, Sincerely, how many times today have you sought Allah's forgiveness by saying, Rabbi ghfirli? How many times? If you exceeded 100 times, you're good. The vast majority of you, I know, don't raise your hands. <laughs> did not say 100 times, did not say 50 times, did not even say 10 times. 
Maybe they said once or twice out of mistake because, oh, astaghfirullah, I thought it was water. Out of mistake, not out of seeking Allah's forgiveness. Then if we don't ask Allah for forgiveness, how is Allah going to forgive us? How many times do we say, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah, per day? There is no dhikr. But how many times uh, uh, do we sing songs? Do we recall a, 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 a movie caption? Do we say poetry a lot? When you come from your car to the venue, you say music. One of the brothers came to me, Sheikh, I come to pray five times a day in the masjid. But I have one problem. I said, what? He said, whenever I make ruku' and sujood, I say, Subhana Rabbi al azim but with music. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? <laughs> I said, I was listening to Hello from the other side. And I'm saying, Subhana Rabbi al azim Subhana Rabbi al azim I said, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajim. Were you listening to music when you were coming to the masjid? He said, of course, Sheikh. And this is why. Shaitan is controlling you even in Salat. Because your life is not with Allah, your heart is not with Allah. So you have to work hard to fill your heart with dhikr. This is the gym we want your heart to start working in. You have to start your training and working out with forgiveness. When was the last time you forgave someone? When was the last time you pardoned someone? So many people say bad things to us. They insult us. They don't respect us. What do you do? I'm going to hold it against you until I get the right moment and attack. No, this is illness in your heart. Purify your heart. Learn to let go. Imagine the Prophet والسلام, how was he? Wallahi ya akhwan, I wish we can see him وسلم, and kiss his head and kiss his hand and kiss his feet. He's a magnificent man. He is not like any man. Me sitting in front of you, I'm a public relation manager in my company. My job is to present my company in the best way. So I know how to present myself and to be accepted. The Prophet wasn't like that. The Prophet was natural. He was not making up things. A man, Anas ibn Malik says, may Allah be pleased with him. I was walking with the Prophet All of a sudden, a man jumped from behind him, startling the Prophet pulling him from his cloak where it injured his neck and shoulder. It made it red. Not only that, he disrespected the Prophet ﷺ by saying, Ya Muhammad, not your Prophet of Allah, calling him by name. Ya Muhammad, give me from the money you have. It is Allah's money, not your money. If someone talks to me like this, I'm going to use my MMA. <laughs> I'm going to put him on the floor and jump on his stomach until he's flat. How dare you speak to me like this? I'm your friend? I'm your uh, colleague? Not the Prophet ﷺ. He looks at him, gives him a big smile, and tells his companion, give him money. This is the forgiveness I want from you. His uncle, beloved uncle, Hamza, was assassinated by Wahshi ibn Harb for being freed as a slave. This is his reward. So he hides, hides. He cannot face him, face man to man. <laughs> Nobody can face Hamza. Hamza is the lion of Allah. So he's watching him in, in Battle of Uhud. Fighting this, killing him, killing him, killing him, killing him. Until he was not looking, 
So he threw him with a spear and killed him. Years later, Wahshi is free, but he's not happy, he's not satisfied. Then he accepts Islam. So he goes to the Prophet ﷺ like this, so that he would not identify him. The Prophet looks at him and recognizes him. And he accepts Islam from him. And then he tells him, tell me how you killed Hamza. So he explains to him that nobody could get close to Hamza because he was a fierce warrior. Until I found a moment without him noticing me and I killed him. Now, this is your uncle. And he is your brother in suckling. He is the brother of the Prophet ﷺ. They suckled together. And he is the Lion of Allah. What did the Prophet do ﷺ? What would you do? The Prophet said, May Allah forgive you. If you can, if, and this is a request, don't let me see you. So that I wouldn't feel bad. But Allah forgives you, you're a good Muslim, you're, that's it. So this forgiveness, do we have it within us? Who is married here? Ya <laughs> Latif. Where am I? None of you is married? Okay. Two, three. What is this? Is LGBTQ infiltrating the place? Come on. This is not acceptable. I am originally from Indonesia. Indonesian men are men. I was married when I was 23. Alhamdulillah. I took my second wife when I was 28. <laughs> so you have to get married. Don't say, well, I, they say that. Look, you don't have to marry Miss Indonesia. <laughs> marry someone who wants to be married and have a good life. She doesn't have to be the most beautiful woman. You need someone to find comfort and to be a good mother. Upstairs, we have a lot. <laughs> so inshallah you will be able to do this. But when you have the will, Allah will help you. The first and most important person to have forgiveness in your heart too is your wife. You should never ever have any problems with your wife. Yes, we have, you know, spices, salt and black pepper, but never, never, you know, sambal. No, 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 this is not good. <laughs> so, you have to forgive your wife. And you have to forgive your husband. You have to forgive your own brother and your own cousin. How many times your uncle and aunt said bad words and you disliked it? Forgive. Ignore. The more you forgive and pardon, the higher you are at the sight of Allah. And this is why Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, forgave his cousin who slandered Mother Aisha. Imagine, Mastah was the cousin of Abu Bakr, one of the first to migrate to Medina, but he was poor. Abu Bakr used to give him every week money because he's my cousin and he's a migrant. When the hypocrites slandered Mother Aisha and accused her of adultery. Masbah fell in this sin. Hassan ibn Thabit and Hamra ibn Jahsh as well. So Abu Bakr was offended. He's my cousin and he slanders my own daughter and the wife of the Prophet. I will never give him any penny after today. Allah revealed an ayah in Surah An Nur. Those whom I favored with wealth should not swear by Allah not to give those relatives and those who are poor and those who are uh, muhajireen in the cause of Allah. And they should forgive and they should pardon. 
Don't you want Allah to forgive you and pardon you? Abu Bakr immediately when he heard this ayah said, Wallahi, I want Allah to forgive me and pardon me. I make you my witness, Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I will never stop giving him money. Khalas. This is how our hearts should be. Not filled with grudges and hatred and enmity. You should love everybody. Have peace with everybody. When you do this, is it easy? It is very difficult. <coughs> Allah Azza wa Jal says, "Itfa' billati hiya ahsan." Protect and defend with what is best. Whatever harm that comes to you, protect yourself and defend yourself with whatever is best and good in rhetoric. So that when you do this, whomever you have enmity with will turn into being an ally, a friend. And this is not something easy because only those who are fortunate, وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا Those who are patient can attain this level and those who are fortunate can attain this level. And we have to drink with our right hand, not with our left hand. It is not permissible to drink with your left. So I always bring this to the notice of the brothers here so that they can warn each other. The brother is telling me his watch is broken. Go and fix it, if you wish. Or the time is out. Ah, OK, sorry. So, <coughs> so I will conclude my talk by asking Allah Azza wa Jalla and praying to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala that he purifies our hearts and that he cleanses it from all what he dislikes. And I pray to Allah that he fills our hearts with Iman, with Taqwa, with love, with mercy, with forgiveness to all mankind. Hada wallahu a'lam wa nisbatu al-ilm ilayhi aslam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyina Muhammad. What? MMA. What is How it? How many years you trained? I don't. I did not train for MMA. Since they got into MMA. No, no, no. I did. I did karate when I was very, very young, <laughs> <laughs> and I did a little kung fu and uh, aikido. But then I thought it was too time-consuming because I have to work two to three hours and then shower. So I decided to buy a nine millimeter. <laughs> It was much easier, safer. <laughs> All what you have to do is this, and everybody stays away from me. <laughs> and it's licensed, it's legal. I, I carry it legally. I don't go against the law, alhamdulillah. Sheikh, <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, some patients here. Uh, they have Mostly it's a long, long question. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have met this situation since I came in uh, Indonesia. People have questions, but they turn it into a lecture. <laughs> so, Sheikh, I have a question, please. And they start to give a lecture. <laughs> this is not right. You want to save my time and your time. Your question is 1 plus 1 equals 2. I will answer you. If I need elaboration, I will say, OK, what do you mean? But you don't give me your life story. And, Sheikh, I was abused when I was young. And, and I did not. So go to the. Uh, like this, A4 question, what should I do? Okay, let me try to summarize it. Sure. First question is, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. May Allah always protect Sheikh Asim Ahmadi. And those audience listening to us and watching us here. Sheikh, why do you uh, set a price? for the consultation of marriage, for example, but for a Q&A, it's not, it's no price. First of all, what is the ruling on taking money for teaching knowledge? Halal or haram? Halal. halal. What is the ruling on taking money for teaching the Quran? Halal. 
Therefore, I, alhamdulillah, don't take money for teaching, for coming to Indonesia to give lectures, to give courses, because I don't need to. I have money, alhamdulillah. Asking questions is fun. People call me on the phone <laughs> every day from all over the world for free. 24 hours, seven days a week. When I'm available, you call, I answer you. With one condition, you have right to call me once a day. And I know the numbers, I watch. <laughs> Some people try to be smart, they call me after eight hours. Uh, Sheikh Sam, I said, didn't you call me? I said, yes, Sheikh, but uh, policy is one question. Number two, your question should not exceed five minutes. Such questions are not allowed. <laughs> Sheikh, Sheikh, do you have some time? I would like to talk to you. No, no, I don't have time. What's your question? Then I will ask you. Because all of these, if he reads the whole paper, I will summarize it in one line. All of these talk is circumstantial, not needed. So this is not a venting session. This is Q&A session. So you can call me, I answer you for free. You can send your questions to my website. On regular days, 150 questions a day I answer, with the grace of Allah, for free. You can get me on Twitter, if I'm on Twitter, usually between Fajr and Ishraq, I sit in the masjid, I answer questions on Twitter for free. Now, if someone says, no, 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 I want to sit with you for half an hour. Half an hour is my time of my wife, my children, my grandchildren, my own time to go to the gym, to work, to buy groceries, to do things. Yes, yes, I want to sit with you for half an hour. You want to sit with me for half an hour? Pay money. <laughs> oh, Sheikh, fi Allah. Why? Sheikh, you're, you're charging $200 for one hour. Yeah? This is too expensive. You pay peanuts, you get monkeys. <laughs> I'm a gorilla. <laughs> peanuts is not good for me. So, when you go to a lawyer or to a professor, doctor, surgeon, when you tell him, oh, please give me a discount, you know, don't do it in my spine, do it in my knee. This is not the way it's done. I have a million of subscribers. They know me, they want to sit and talk to me. Is it fair for me as an individual to sit with all of them? It's not humanly possible. And at the same, at the same time, I have a life. So, I apologize, but life is, I wouldn't say a bitch, but <laughs> I wouldn't say. But life is difficult. And alhamdulillah, there are many, many ulama and scholars and students of knowledge who would do this for free. Go to them, akhi. Seriously. So, no, no, Sheikh, you are, you are the only one who can solve my OCD. You are the only one who knows. You, I'm the only one, but come. Okay. Allah Allah. Uh, buat yang pertanyaannya lebih dari satu, saya sampaikan satu dulu ya. Nanti kalau masih ada waktu baru saya tanyakan lagi. Saya beralih ke pertanyaan yang menurut saya lebih menarik, gitu ya. Untuk kasus sekalian ini. I try to make short this. Long way. Okay. There is one businessman in the catering business. He has a contract with one company, and to get this contract, he must pay about 5% of the contract value. The question is, the fee for this contract, the 5% fee, is it considered legal in Islam or not? He's giving it to who? To the officer in the company. Of course not. This is a bribe. Yes. This is a called rashwa. And the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, May Allah curse the one who gives a bribe and takes a bribe. How do we define a bribe? A bribe is any financial compensation given to someone in order 
to get something. Otherwise, if he was not in that position, you would not have given him anything. I'm a government official. I work in the government. And people come to me and say, oh, Sheikh Hassan, this is a three days in Bali, gift for you and for your children, you go for a vacation. Another one brings me an iPhone. A third one brings me a um, meal in the hotel. A, third, a fourth one gives me a laptop. Why? It's gift. People love me. Okay, Sheikh, can you please resign and stay home and see how many people will give you gifts? How many people will give me? Zero. They're giving you because of your post, because they need your signature. They need your name. They need your phone call. And this is bribe. And whoever deals with it is cursed by Allah. May Allah protect us. The next question. I'm, a one, I'm one of the students of the Quran. And my teacher asked me to memorize Surah al kafi the first 10 ayahs. Surah? al kafi al kafi al kahf Mm. But I have difficulties to memorize it. I easy to forget and not very easy for me to memorize. So please, uh, one of my friends said that uh, I cannot easily memorize because I have a lot of sins. <laughs> so can you please tell me how to easily memorize the Quran? This is true. Sins prevent people from good memory. As a Shafi'i, may Allah have mercy on him, said, Shakawtu ila waki'a su'a hifdi, fa'arshadani ila tarkin ma'asi, wa qala alam bi anna al-ilma nurun, wa nurullahi la yu'tahu aasi. And he says, I complained to my Shaykh, Waki'a ibn al-Jarrah, that I have bad memory. <laughs> Who's complaining? Shafi'i, Imam Shafi'i. He has bad memory. I wish he sees our memory. <laughs> and he said to him that you should avoid sins. He's Imam Shafi'i. What sin are you talking about? But these guys, you know, normal things to us, to them is considered to be sinful. They're so high in Iman way, way above us. And he told me, be aware that knowledge is light from Allah. And this light cannot be given to someone who's sinful. Nevertheless, what your friend said is not entirely correct because if you repeat, repeat, and repeat, you will memorize it with the grace of Allah. Why? Allah said in Surah Al-Qamar, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ لِمُدَّكِرِ Allah made the Qur'an easy to remember. So who will remember it? Those who memorize and strive and do their level best to memorize it, Allah will make a way for them, inshallah. So don't, never give up. Always continue to try until you reach your goal, Bidnil. Next. <coughs> My friend suggested to me send the Al-Fatiha to parents, to the grandparents, and so on. And also to all the creatures. Yeah. Okay. Is it allowed or not? Okay, so you want to send the Fatiha through Aramex, DHL, what? By prayer, prayer. Well, what is this? <laughs> sending Fatiha. Why send the full Quran? <laughs> Akhi, when the Prophet والسلام, in the authentic Sunnah hadith was burying his companion, after they buried him in the graveyard, what did the Prophet say to his companions? Al Fatiha. Did he say this? Why? Isn't it good? He said, استغفروا لأخيكم وسلوا الله له الثبات فإنه الآن يسأل 
ask Allah for forgiveness for your brother and to make him steadfast because now he's being questioned. Never ever he told them to recite the Fatiha. So do we know better why the Prophet never told us to recite the Fatiha for our fathers and mothers and deceased? And why do we Wahhabis always say it's haram? <laughs> there isn't anything called Wahhabi. In Saudi, nobody says, uh, what are you, Sunni, Shia, and Wahhabi. <laughs> Anyone who hears you say, Sheikh Asim is a Wahhabi, they laugh at you. What is Wahhabi? There is nothing, but who accuses me of being Wahhabi? Those who worship graves, those who worship Tijani Badawi Jilani, those who are Shia, those who hate Sunnah. Because we follow the straight path of the Prophet, how can they discredit us? They cannot say, oh, no, this is not from the Sunnah. Everything we're doing is according to the Sunnah. Everything is kosher. So how they can make people run away from us? Oh, he's Wahhabi, he's Wahhabi. <laughs> Maybe he's Saudi, you know. Okay, so what? No, no, Saudis are this and Saudis are that and Saudis hate Indonesian people. What is this crazy stuff? So do you think if there is some benefit in reciting the Fatiha and giving it to the dead, that I will stop you? Yani I hate the Fatiha? Of course not. But I hate innovation. If there was good in it, if it was permissible, if it was halal, wallahi, I will be the first one to do it. But it is not. So how can I face Allah on the Day of Judgment and I say to him, uh, yes, the Prophet didn't do it, companions didn't do it, tabi'in didn't do it, tabi'in tabi didn't do it, but it is good. How would I face Allah? Allah will punish me for that. So it is not permissible. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, whenever one of us dies, his good deeds are cut. No more good deeds. Except, ilmun nafir, sadaqatun jariya, a waladun salihun yad'u lahu. Either you have beneficial knowledge you leave behind. So you, in your grave, your meter is ticking, it's clicking, you're get, getting re rewards. So inshallah, when I die in my grave, you watch this video, you make dua for me. I'm happy. <laughs> Today I go to the hotel and I sleep. And people watch my YouTube channel, my Instagram, they benefit in America, in China, in, in, in the Middle East. Inshallah, if I'm sincere, I benefit. Sadaqatun jariya. You build a masjid. Every time people come and pray, you're benefiting in your grave. You print a copy of the Quran. People read it. You, bring, you, you print books in beneficial knowledge. You build a, uh, um, a well. People drink from it. All of this continues shataqatun jariya. Thirdly, waladun salihun yad'u lah. Boy or girl that pray for you after your death. This is, will reach you. Whatever you do for your parents. So, okay, I'm not his son, but I have an uncle, I have a relative, I have a neighbor, I have a friend. How can I benefit him? Four ways. Number one, dua. You can make dua to anyone. So make dua, oh Allah forgive them, don't send them Fatiha, make dua. Number two, charity. Give charity, this is on behalf of my friend. This is on behalf of my relative. Number three, Umrah. I do Umrah every month or two months for my father and for my mother. Alternate. I do one for this, the second time I do for my mother. Because I know it will reach them, benefit them. For Hajj. You did Hajj for yourself, do your Hajj for your uncle, for your relative. You have money, give Hajj Badal. 
we pay someone, you do Hajj for my friend who used to be a very good friend of mine. It will reach them. Other than that, nothing reaches. And Allah knows best. Okay. Next question. There are a lot of cross medication. Yes. In Indonesia and uh, Karabash. I know Karabash. Do you know Karabash? Um, we, in Saudi, we call it Karabash. It's since I was very young, this is the, first, the only thing I know. I don't know what's called in. I can tell by the smell, very strong smell. And when you have gases, you put it in your stomach. It relieves you. I don't know what's called in Indonesian. I have to smell it. Anyhow, continue. Mm. And uh, as I said, I worry uh, to do shirik. Because I don't know the healer, not the doctor, the healer is uh, praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not. So please tell me do and don't when I go to this uh, first medication. Okay, first of all, Allah Azza wa Jal did not create an illness without creating a cure. Some people will know it, some people won't know it. So how to differentiate between different types of medication? Number one, there is shar'i medication. What is shar'i medication? The medication that Islam came with, such as honey, such as black seed, habba sauda, such as cupping, hijama, such as al qist al hindi such as zamzam such as ruqya all of these are healings from the sharia so you can do this providing that the person doing it for you is muslim and not doing shirk number two of healing is natural healing medical healing which is known through practice. So physicians come, mix this with this, and you take it, oops, he died. So this, is, <laughs> this is not good, this is not good. They mix this with this, oh, he's cured. Antibiotics is good for this kind of illness. This kind of medicine is good for headaches. So it is through experiments and medical reports and science we know this is halal. Now we come to the third type of <clears throat> forms of healing that is neither shari nor medically or scientifically proven. And this is minor shirk, such as wearing a copper bracelet. What is this? Oh, this is good for your knees and joints and uh, rheumatism and it's very good shirk. We go to the doctors, uh, doctors, orthopedic doctors. Is this good? No, 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 this is bogus. We go to Imam Masjid. Is this good? Nothing in the Quran and Sunnah. So believing in it is haram. Wearing the uh, uh, disc of energy, something they have. Every time they bring something to you and they say that this, this ring, atiq, huh? it's also all of this is shirk, minor shirk. If you think Allah will cure you through it. It is major shirk if you think it is a cure. So now we go back to the question. He says, I go to the healer. What is healer? Is he doing ruqya? If yes, he has to be from Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. He prays, he doesn't do any shirk and you heal his ruqya. I don't go to someone who says, no, 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 no. Maybe he's praying to the jinn. A real Muslim, Raqi, would be audible. And this is why the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, in the hadith, I'iridu alayya ruqaakum. Let me hear your ruqya, so that I would know if it has anything that's against Quran and Sunnah or not. Because ruqya is dua, is making dua. So you can, I can make dua in Arabic, not from the Quran and Sunnah. But it would be accepted. But to mumble things without knowing what it means, no, this is not permissible. 
So I need to know what is this healer? What does he do? But I think and the answer is comprehensive that he could figure out inshallah. May Allah bless you uh, and all of us here and all of the Muslim in the world. Yeah. I mean, uh, perhaps if you notice, uh, I'm the questioner from the lecture a couple of hours ago. I did so, notice because you are taking selfie of yourself and then answer. Yeah, I, I'm sorry, remember. I'm sorry. I remember. Uh, don't I, worry. I just want to be, uh, feel blessed and grateful to be given such uh, chance to ask you another question. Yes, sir. Actually, this question is from my cousin. Uh, he went to, learn, to your lecture last week in Jakarta, but he didn't, he didn't get a chance to ask you this. His question was uh, how to raise and make children love, love Islam and love Quran so that when we as a parent uh, not there for them, or in other words, die, they will, they, their faith in Islam will still remain firm. And in this case, uh, we as a parent die when the child haven't grown up yet, how to uh, make sure they will grow in Islam and have good faith. Yeah, okay. Zakallah okay. First, <coughs> first of all, hidayah, guidance, is in the hand of Allah Azza wa Jal. How many years did the Prophet ﷺ live with his uncle Abu Talib? Almost 50 years. Could he make him accept Islam? No. Even on his deathbed. Ya Ammah. Qul kalima. Tashfa'u laka inda Allahi yawm al Say the word, la ilaha illallah. That I can intercede with Allah on the day of judgment. He was almost going to say it. Abu Jahl. Next to him said, you want to say it? something different than what your father Abdul Muttalib used to say so at the end he said he will die on the religion of Abdul Muttalib and he died the prophet was depressed was sad he loved his uncle and he couldn't save him Allah Azza wa Jal revealed the, the Quran Laysa alayka hudahum walakinna Allah yahdi min yasha it's not for you to guide them, but it is Allah who guides whomever he wills. This means that we have to do what we have to do, but we cannot ensure or guarantee the results. And Allah never asks us for results. Allah asks us for the way. Do what you want, according to what Allah wants, but the results in Allah's hands. Khalas, I did my business. And many people make mistakes about the results. So they say, okay, how much or how many followers Sheikh so-and-so has? Oh, he has five million. MashaAllah, he's good. How much Sheikh so-and-so has? Well, he has 150,000 back. He's, not, he's nothing. Sheikh bin Baz, may Allah be pleased, may Allah have mercy on him, one of the greatest scholars of Islam. Those who attended his classes in the masjid were handful. While when Sheikh Al Albani came to Medina, the masjid was full. So some of his students came to him and said, Sheikh, why is it that very little people come to attend your class 
with your huge knowledge and you're the Grand Mufti of Saudi, well, they go somewhere else and they attend to people lesser than you. If the Sheikh's heart was corrupt, what would he say? Oh, these people are ignorant. They don't know. They don't have knowledge. He said, this is Allah's favor. He bestowed upon whomever he wishes. He never stopped giving lectures, even if they were five or ten. Some people make a condition. How many people are attending? If you say 10,000, said, okay, yes, let's make a lecture. If you say 50, said, mm, no, too little. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, on the day of judgment, I saw the messenger with huge followers. And I saw a messenger with less followers. And I saw a messenger with thousands of followers. And I saw a messenger with a handful of followers. And I saw a messenger with one or two only following him. And I saw a messenger with no one following him. So now you tell me, this messenger, he failed? No messenger fails in his mission. But Allah did not guide the people to follow him. The messenger was doing his level best. He succeeded. He gained the highest rank with Allah. He's a messenger. So you don't guarantee the results. Do what Allah tells you to do. How? Raise your children according to Islam. According to Quran. Make them love Islam, not be forced for it because sometimes they will hate Islam if you force them. No, make them love it. Give them incentives, ice cream, maybe some yeah, any, uh, uh, picnic, promise them if you finish this surah, I will take you to play or something and make them love Islam. At the end of the day, if they grow to become good Muslims, you have done your job. If they grow to be bad Muslims, you have done your job. Allah will not hold you accountable. What happens, Shaykh, if I die before I manage to do this? Who made you die? <laughs> it's not your fault. So Allah will take care of them. Don't worry. Allah is a razzaq. But you have to worry about now, when you're alive, what did you do? And inshallah, things will be fine. Trust Allah and depend on Him and have full reliance on Him and everything will be smooth. If someone says Salaamu Alaikum, we say Alaikum Salaam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Ikhwan Ariadi. Uh, first of all, I would like to say, Anna Uhibuku Fila. Ahabbaka Allah alladhi ahbabtani fi. So my, my question is about Anfi Sheikh. Uh, it is about someone who is born in Indonesia, who is not from a good uh, practicing Muslim, probably. Uh, in terms of doing ibadah, how are they different than someone who is born in a very good family, probably in Medina or uh, Mecca, uh, in terms of the rewards? That is my question. Okay, first of all, a lot of the people think it is not fair for you, Sheikh Asim, to be born in Saudi next to Mecca and Medina, you get to learn. Islam, you get to go to Mecca every month, you go to Medina every few months, you worship Allah. While we were born in Morocco or in Indonesia or in the Philippines, and we're not from a practicing family. It's not fair. Who are you judging, Allah? Allah gave me this gift. And Allah gave you that gift. If you look, in Indonesia, you will find more practicing people than me, more knowledgeable people than me. And if you look in Saudi Arabia, in Mecca, 
you will find people in Mecca who had never gone to Haram. Residents of Mecca, living in Mecca, five minutes away from Kaaba, never went to Kaaba. Why? They don't like Kaaba. They never prayed in Masjid al-Haram. So guidance is in Allah's hands. He gives it to people in America. And I've seen scholars and students of knowledge in America, mashallah, that are abiding by Islam like we are abiding in Islam in Mecca and Medina. Very heartwarming. But in Muslim countries, we find women not wearing the hijab. Men going to concerts, movies, not praying on time, doing drugs. So this is not unfair. This is your choice. If you wanted something, you work hard for it. You, in any country of the world, like Spanish, you will learn it from an app. You will subscribe to an internet site that would teach you, you will pay money to learn until you master Spanish. You look for it. You love Allah, you work hard to strive and learn your ibadah and learn your religion properly and you will reach there. So it's not the country, Akhi. It's in the guidance of your heart. If Allah guides you, you will reach there, inshallah. Nice. Um, you know, First, I want to take some of your words last night in Masjid Abdullah that we as a young generation should not be involved on labeling individuals like this guy is Mutia, this guy is Kodari or something like that. Yet, we are probably aware that in this time of period, our internet and our social media are polluted by so many ideas from many fair talk, like Nurji A or Fido, whatever. I'm kind of nervous right now. <laughs> um, plenty of them are claiming themselves are as a fair talk and media. And the worst part is, each of them got their own good day. And knowing the fact that even the student of Ibn Abbas, which is a Nafi Ibn Azra, even fall into their kind of shupa. So that made me think that should we really limit our source of information from particular to youth? But in the same time, I think that will lead me to good. So which, which made me think that I really hope you can give me or give us a young generation a principle of or quality to to examine or filter any of those ideas that come to us like a pouring rain. So I think that's all pretty much my question. Thank you so much. Really glad to have you here. Barakallah fiq. Akhi, this is not something that we can gamble with. I cannot say to the youth, listen to everyone. And inshallah, you'll be safe. Because this is putting you in the middle of the ocean when you don't know how to swim. And say, inshallah, you'll be safe. If not eaten by shark, you will drown. <laughs> so, in Islam, Allah Azza wa Jal tells us to go to the Quran and to the Sunnah. Whenever you have dispute, go back to Quran and Sunnah to Allah and the Messenger. Now we have, as you have stated, 72 sects, which the Prophet said, all in hell except one. And everyone has hujjah. This is not true. If you if they had hujjah, Allah would have confused us and we would not know what is right and what is wrong. No, no, no. Al-Haqq ablaj. 
Truth is clear as daylight. You can see it. Anyone from the people of Khawarij, Murji'a, of innovation, of Aqeedah that is corrupt, the moment he opened his mouth, immediately you know it's falsehood. While the people on the path of the Prophet والسلام, the moment they open their mouths, you say, hmm, natural. I feel good. I feel that this is going with my soul because this is the religion of Allah. So you as the youth, what to do? Number one, don't engage yourself with something that would confuse you because this is what shaitan wants you to do. Shaitan's only mission in life is to gather as many volunteers and companions in hellfire. That's it. Whether you do it through lusts and desires, whether you do it through whispers and doubts, whether you do it through shirk and OCD, no problem. You choose. I want you to be with me in hellfire. This is what shaitan wants. So now, as youth, you have to focus. If you go to the gym and you don't focus on what you're doing by just looking at people and you will lose. You will be distracted. No, focus on what you're doing. What are you doing? I'm learning Islam. How to learn Islam? Learn the book of Allah. How to learn the book of Allah? Learn the tafsir, the meaning, and memorize. Then learn about the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Implement it in your life. Learn about the aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Once you do this, you can easily filter, but you don't go and listen to filter. Rather, if you hear something, you will be able to filter. By saying this, we say you have to follow one trusted sheikh. A sheikh, you trust his knowledge. You trust his religious commitment. You trust his akhlaq. I wouldn't trust a sheikh who sits with women and flirts with them and laughs and cracks jokes and she cracks jokes and <laughs> my place or yours. This is not a real sheikh. A real sheikh who is committed to Islam, to abiding by the religion. If you follow this sheikh, he will manage to carry you until you reach a level. Will you say, when you say to the sheikh, Zakallah khair, you did your job, I can walk on my own now. Because now I, you have given me the knowledge and the strength to see for myself. But till then, you have to be with the sheikh. Otherwise, you may be distracted like you have said. Hello. Hello. So you may be distracted by the different people on the arena that you will have doubts in your own religion, which is very bad. People of deviance and different sects, they do not have hujjah. And Nafi ibn al-Azraq, who came to Ibn Abbas and Abbas uh, uh, cleared it up for him, his doubts, I think, if I'm not mistaken, he also went to Umar and shared with him some of his doubts. What did Umar do? He took his stick and hit him on his head until his head started bleeding. So he says, do you still have doubts? He said, no, 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 khalas. doubts are gone, all gone, disappeared. He said, okay, now you go. So this is the best way, inshallah, of solving doubts. A good stick. This is unforgiven. <laughs> but because the lecture was purity of heart, I forgot. <laughs> Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. 
how can we easily accept someone's word or action that can make our hearts hurt than be able to forgive easily? Thank you. I excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I did not understand the question. <laughs> How to easily forgive? How to easily forgive? And accept the someone's words or action to <laughs> Atau mungkin diulang, diulang, lebih simpel. Okay. Atau pacar yang saja. Um, gimana caranya biar kita bisa mudah untuk menerima dengan mudah apa perbuatan atau perkataan orang lain yang itu membuat hati kita sakit dan mudah untuk memaafkan gitu. Ya, yeah, basically si as how to easily forgive someone who hurt our feelings. Okay, so everyone on earth is being tested. No one can live without a test. No one can pass a month or two without someone attacking you, abusing you, cursing you, disrespecting you, giving you name other than your name. I forgive you though. So this is usual, and this is test from Allah Azza wa Jal. One day you're healthy, one day you're sick, one day you're rich, one day you're poor. And tilka al-ayyamu nudawiluha bayna nas There are ups and downs. Now here is your test. When Allah sends your way someone to hurt you, you have one of two options. One, be hurt and hold a grudge and wait for the right moment to pay back. Option two, be patient, forgive for the sake of Allah and ask Allah for compensation and reward in this life and in the hereafter. Any third option? Do you know? There is no third option. So you choose. Seriously, there is no third option. Either pay back and wait and hold a grudge and most people who live like this never sleep at night they're on their bed how can i get back how can i avenge myself how can i get back my respect while the people who disrespected them and did wrong to them are asleep and don't even remember you so you are the loser but if you forgive and pardon and have the upper hand, you will be rewarded by Allah and you will be the better person. Baik. Terima kasih banyak atas perhatiannya, atas kehadirannya, Alhamdulillah. Juga kami mohon doanya dari para hadirin sini semua untuk kesehatan dari Asim Al-Hakim. As long as you're not I'm seeing hands raised, you're concluding. Yes. Uh, Mashallah, very smart. Yang mohon doanya dari para hadirin di tempat ini untuk kesehatan saya Asim Al-Hakim. Mudah-mudahan kami semua diberikan kelancaran dan kemudahan untuk menyelesaikan rangkaian tour ke kota-kota berikutnya. Besok kami akan beralih ke kota Medan. Kemudian Minggu depan kita akan kembali ke Jakarta dan lanjut ke Kota Bandung. Uh, Mudah-mudahan kehadiran Syekh Asim Al-Hakim di tempat ini membawa barokah buat kita semua. Semoga kita semua mendapatkan manfaat dari ilmu beliau yang luar biasa. Dan uh, semoga kita semua dilindungi dan dirahmati Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Terima kasih. Tidak lupa kami sampaikan kepada Muslim United, juga BLI. Yayasan Dawah Lintas Internasional Juga ada para pihak yang telah membantu terrealisasinya cara yang baik ini uh, Sekali lagi kami ucapkan terima kasih Bapak Wafikum 